Have you ever wondered how some brands make amazing slides that look super professional? Well, the chance is very high that they're using gradients in their design. But what actually makes a nice gradient? Well, in this video, we're going to look at five tips to improve gradients in your presentation to make them look professional. And for the first one, we're starting with colors, because colors are the foundation of good gradient design. Just look at these examples. Here we can see they're minimal, but with a smart use of colors, they really make their design intriguing and stand out. Apple uses them quite a lot in their designs and marketing materials, and so does Microsoft and other tech companies. And I understand that choosing colors is hard, and color theory in itself is a rabbit hole. There's no one set of rule. And that's a good thing, because otherwise everything will look the same. So the first thing you have to do is select a nice color. And I often use sites like Pinterest or any other mood boards to get some inspiration on and start from there. Just look around on the sites and see if you can find something that would match your brand or your vision or whatever you want to show in your presentation. And as soon as you've found the color palette that you like, you can easily jump into PowerPoint and start from there. Let's have a look. So here we start from a blank slide. And what you want to do is you want to right click and format background. That's where you'll find everything to change the color of the background. Now we go to gradient fill here on the right, and that's where it gives us a standard presets. Now, obviously, if you go to the presets, they look quite horrible. So you don't really want to use those in your designs. They don't look very fresh. So what I always do is I start from a standard one and then just start fresh. So remove one of the dots, the gradient stops until you have two. Place them on both sides and then go to the color picker and I'll put that on full screen. There we go. And here you can just select one of the colors if you have it or your brand palette or go to more colors and then choose one of the colors that you have. I'm going for a dark purple here and add that to the design. For the next stop, I'm going to choose a lighter version. So go to more colors and then choose a lighter version of that purple. Press OK and add it to the slide. Now we go to the direction and we want to change it, let's say from the left to the right. So you instantly see that this gives a totally different feeling of your slide. It's not that standard design, that standard preset of the gradient, but you can customize it. So now I'm going to type in presentation title and here add your subtitle. Let's select both fonts, make them white and maybe use a nice font Avenir Next. And the top one, I think the title we can make it bold. So you see with a few changes, it instantly gives a totally different feeling of that slide. If you compare it to the standard presets, let's take this one, it doesn't really match that well. So that's why I like to use the presets and custom presets of a design. Now, of course, this works with any of the colors that you have. Let's take a few examples. So duplicate the page and you can easily change the colors. So let's say your company is more of a red and yellow tone or orange tone. We can easily do that and maybe add a nice darker or orange tone. And this gives a cool feeling of the slide. So you see, you can play with those settings. Now, this is just the basic version, but of course you can add as many colors as you like. In the examples we've seen from Microsoft or for Apple, they use multiple colors. So what I would advise is start with the simple colors, one or two colors with a dark and a light variant, and then move up once you have mastered that. So as a next example, I suggest we look at the multiple colors. So let's do that and start from a blank slide. So we're going to add new slide. Now here, the first thing I want to do is I want to change the design or the color palette. So go to design, variants, and then choose a color palette that you like. I'm using a very bright color palette that I've got from the Apple inspired presentations. And that is going to be this one. So it has a lot of multiple bright colors in it. So if we now to go to gradient fill and we add three more stops, spread them evenly on the slide or on that bar. And now we're going to select the outer one and just give it that color and continue one by one until we have added our entire palette. And you can see this is becoming quite messy or at first, but as soon as you add them, you see this rainbow chart. For me, I don't really like this style, but there's something we can do to make it very subtle. And for that, we're going to let's first delete the text boxes and it's easier to work with and then go to insert. We're going to add a shape and a rounded rectangle in this case. Drag it from the top corner or almost the top corner to almost the bottom corner on the right. Now this corner is the radius is a bit too much. So I'm going to reduce it to make it more subtle. And here you can see that we get that feeling from the Microsoft build slides. If we copy the text and paste it on here, let's maybe use the same formatting. So I'll change the layout to title slide and then copy the text right here. 
and do the same for the subtitle to get a realistic view. There we go. So here we see that we have used quite an intense color palette or a gradient stop, but still we tune it down with that large box on top of it. So it's very subtle in the presentation. So it's a different technique that you could apply to add multiple colors to your slide. Now colors, of course, is just one thing. There's also another important aspect, which is the type of gradient. There's multiple types of gradient that we could use throughout to change the entire design and the look and feel of the gradient. So for that, let's jump into PowerPoint and have a look. I'm going to add a new slide and add a gradient. Let's take an easier one with only two stops and go maybe for that purple one again to show the example. I'm going to delete the text and then put the stops closer together so we can have a feel of what this means. Here we can see we're using a linear gradient and that means we have this solid line, that straight line on the slide. Now we can choose the direction to make it come diagonally, we can put it horizontally, any corner, any radius that we like. So we can change the angle and just rotate it around. That's the principle of this linear gradient that we have on the slides. The other thing that we do is a radial. So if we change it to radial, you'll instantly see that it becomes a circle, one of these stops. Now, if we put this to both edges, this becomes very soft, but from one side, and it sort of shines like a bright light or shadow on the slide. And that's some effect that I really like. So the most common that I use is linear and radial gradients. There's rectangular path and shade as well. If we go to look at the rectangular one and I put them close together, here we can see it casts like a rectangular shadow on the slide. But to be honest, I have not yet found a really good use case where this really comes to its full effect. So I barely use this one. I don't think I've ever used it, to be honest. Same with the path. It does a bit of a strange thing, like a rectangular in the box. I could see maybe to create some depth on it, but I haven't used it yet in any designs. And for a shade from title, that does a bit of the inverse part where you can play around with the shades and get that sort of a cross on the slides and then some box. Again, I haven't used this one too much. I mostly use the linear one and the radial one in designs. Now that brings us to the third part, which is going to be the transparency of your gradients. And the transparency on a gradient is a bit of a different effect that I've realized could add for a very nice use case. For that, let's jump into PowerPoint and show what it does. So let's start from a blank slide and add a picture to the slide. So go to insert icons or on Windows, it will be picture library, I think. Go to images and here let's type in Let's say leopard. It could be anything that you like, of course. And take one on this. The reason I chose this image is because it has a lot of colors, a lot of depth to the slide, and it's kind of hard to put text on it. So I'm going to crop it so it fits the slide and then adjust it so that the picture really is the centerpiece on the page. There we go. Close it for now. And I'm going to add the text box on top. Increase it in size. And here you can see if you use this as a presentation title, it becomes very hard to read. And that's because we have such a little contrast between the white part of the fur here. There's a lot of things on the slide. It becomes hard to read. Now you can use a gradient and a transparent gradient to solve this issue. And for that, we're going to shapes and add a rectangular shape on the slide. Make sure it connects left and right, but it doesn't have to connect to the top if you want. So I'm going somewhere halfway the slide. I'm going to remove the outline, we don't need that. And for the fill, we're going for a gradient fill. Again, here we have all of the stops. We don't need it, we're going for a simple one, so only two, and I'm going to make them dark. I'm going to leave one in the orange color as the example. So we can now set the direction to one of those. Now we know this one, the dark one is the one on top, and the orange one, the right one, is the one at the bottom. Now we can change the orange one to dark as well. And here, choose the top one, and increase the transparency to 100%. And we can see that the gradient is now used to make part of the box transparent. And if you don't like it, or if you don't want that extent, you can always add an extra stop in the middle and then put the transparency to about 40, 50%. Now you can play around with the stops as we're doing here. So I'm going to increase the right one. So we have a solid bar at the bottom and then send this backwards. So send backwards to put it behind that title. And if we now preview this, we can see that we have the image, which is still the main focus of the presentation, but then very subtly at the bottom, we see this gradient that gives room and readability to the title. 
So it's a nice use case, I would say, to use a gradient in your presentation and as a transparency to add it on top of images. Now let's move to the next part, the fourth part, which is transitions. So if you have a presentation with a lot of gradient, it can sometimes be difficult to connect them together. Just have a look at this example. Here we can see that when we use a transition that is connecting the slides, it looks a bit odd and we see that the gradient is messing up that smoothness of the presentation. So if you want to get rid of that, we can easily do it with a very simple trick. So for that, let's also jump into PowerPoint. Going to a new slide and let's maybe take this example. So I'm going to duplicate this one, drag it to the bottom. And then here we have the opening of our presentation. Let's duplicate it once more. And here let's call it second slide. And if we go to transitions and we go to, for example, push here, it was actually a good, a good example. But if you set it to, for example, from left to right, you could see that if we preview, we have the first page. If we connect it, the gradients, it doesn't look very smooth. It looks a bit weird in my opinion. So what we can easily do is if we know that we push it from left to right, we just go to the second slide and we inverse the gradient stops. So we can either do it by changing the stop order. I'm going to increase the duration a little bit so it's slower and then go to first slide. So this is the opening slide. As soon as we click, now it goes in a different direction. So let me put it to the right. That will be better. And if we now click, that moves and the gradient is very subtle. It's also shifting, but it's a way more smooth effect, I would say, on the slide. So that is one way to do it. The other way is, for example, if your gradient stops was originally like this. So we have them both on the same uh, angle here at the bottom, if we can see it. We can also just change the angle. So here we can type in 180, press enter, and we see that the gradients have shifted or the stops have shifted. So that's also a way to do it. And that brings us to the last point, which is the fifth point. And actually that's where we combine all of the previous ones in one slide. So very often you see these professionally layered slides, and we're also going to make a really nice example to showcase all of the previous things we learned and add it to one slide. So let's jump into PowerPoint and add a new slide to the design, new slide. Let's remove this for now. Maybe let's start with a title slide. There we go. Go to insert, go to icons images and let's try a city skyline take this example paste it on the slide and we're going to increase it so it matches or it covers the entire page put it up slightly and send it to the back now let's copy our title here so we have the same fonts i think they look quite fresh and add your subtitle i'm also going to add it here now we're going to add a shape a rectangle and add it on top of the image. We want to send it backwards, one time for the subtitle, second time for the title. Now we're going to format shape, or if you don't have it, right click format shape, and then add a gradient fill. Now here we have this purple fill. So I want to set it from top to bottom. So we have the light part on top and the darker part on the bottom. Now important is that you put the stops not all the way to the edge, but you leave some gaps both left and right. And for that is the reason we do that is if we put this stop all the way to the edge, only the bottom part, so only this part of the slide will be that complete 100% fill. Everything in between will be like some sort of a variant of it. So if we put it a bit more inwards for both, both the top and the bottom edges are that pure color that we've selected. So we know exactly what that one is. I see there's a little outline, so I'm going to remove that as well. There we go. And now we're going to add some transparency to the light slide. So we know the light one is on top and add some transparency to it. Maybe add an extra stop all the way to the end and make it entirely transparent. And then put this one sort of halfway. This is a bit too much. So I'm going to reduce transparency a bit. Let me show you exactly what I'm doing. So I'm putting around 70% for the top and then around 40, 50% for the middle. There we go. So that is the first slide. Now I'm going to a new slide. So I'm going to drag this up here. And then this one, I will make it entirely solid fill with that dark color. So we know that this bottom is connecting with the next slide. Now let's change the layout to something like this. And let's say, add your headline here. Let's make it white. And Avenir next. For the text or the body text, I'm just going to 
copy something from a different presentation, but it's just text boxes and icons. So, but at least we get like a professional feel of what it could look like. And then I'm going to add a push transition to the next, or to the last slide, push from the bottom, increase the duration to two seconds. And now let's preview this one. And here we can see how we have a really nice opening slide, presentation title with a subtle image in the background. We have that gradient on top, semi-transparent. We also connect it with an animation to a normal slide on the presentation with full color on the background. So I think this is a pretty neat effect that you could use on your presentations. So today we learned a lot about using gradients in your PowerPoints and presentations to really level them up and use them wisely. So don't use the standard ones, really play around and try the limits of the gradients. Thanks a lot for watching and if you want to learn more about PowerPoint transitions, make sure to watch the video on screen right now.